welcome traceable designers today we're making the pleated center connector panel this panel is used between side panels or between center panels with side panels it folds over the rod and is connected using velcro fasteners the valance design form is used to make center panels and to make the connector panel. We will be using the folded fabric edge, so we'll position our design form along the folded edge and we'll be making a 15 inch wide panel. So remove the excess from the bottom of your design form to reveal the shape and then we'll be ready to begin. I'm using two different fabrics. I'm using one on the front and one on the back and with the pleats you are able to see the back fabric so I want them to be complementary. We are going to be adding excess fabric six inches roughly to the top of the panel so when you're sizing your panel make sure you have a 15 inch wide piece plus a little extra and then you'll cut that section so that you're ready to begin. So make sure the top of your fabric is very straight across the top and then we'll add that extra. Now on my back lining I have a directional print so I want to make sure it's facing the correct direction and then I'm just going to cut my lining side to be the same size as my fabric side. Make sure you're tracing on the back side of the fabric and your top edge of your fabric is very very straight. You're going to measure down five inches and mark where you will be adding the excess fabric. We don't want to go all the way down six. We will do that for the lining side. So make sure you're straight on the left side on the fold and then just mark down five and a half inches across the top of the design form. Then make sure everything's very straight before you begin tracing. You want to make sure that you're on the fold and that you are across the upper marks. Now we want to make a nice shape. It's a very subtle shape, so we want to make sure that it's very clear. So when you get to the first section after tracing the straight lower edge, you want to make sure that little V section is very clear. So you put a little mark there and then just trace all the way up the side to the other indent make a mark there and then straight over to the 15 inch mark. Now we're going to be sizing our fabric to 15 inches so we're going to mark that on the bottom and on the top and then we'll use the design form, turn the design form so that we can cut a nice straight line across the 15 inch width area. So you'll just trace from top to bottom to mark the width of your panel. We want to make sure everything stays nice and straight and even, so make sure to pin your fabric so that it holds, and then just follow along the trace line very carefully, making sure that you have your indents and your curves, and then just cut straight across the, the side to make your first panel, which is your front fabric. Then the back fabric, since mine is a directional print, I want to make sure all the wrinkles are out. I want to make sure my butterflies here are facing the right direction before I cut. And again, we're going to cut the lining just a little bigger than the base fabric or the front fabric. So I'm measuring down in this case six inches following the same process. I'm tracing across the top of the design form to mark the the, the extra length and then I'm moving it in from the folded area so that I can get a little bit more width and then just trace off the design form as you did with the front fabric and now you have your lining section. So when we're doing our panels you'll see that the front fabric is just a little smaller because that's where our heat and bond strips are going. So pull out your heat and bond strip. This is your fusible seam tape and make sure we're on the front side of the fabric, not the back. Very important, we're putting front sides together. Turn the steam off of your iron so that you're just using a dry iron. And then just position your seam tape very close to the edge and run your iron along the seam tape to secure. So we're going to be repositioning individual pieces of seam tape. We want to try to accentuate the shape as best we can. So we're going to follow along with the sections of the seam tape. So we have our first little straight section and then we start with our V and remember I said to mark your fabric so you know where to end at the change. So here we are at the first little point and I've stopped my straight edge there and then I'm going straight across the bottom with my other section of seam tape and then we'll follow the same process up the other section of the V so we have a really nice shape. So we'll follow up on the left side all the way up. Again we have a little one inch area that we want to make sure is pronounced so we're cutting a little piece of tape. Now with this I missed a little section my heat and bond pulled apart so make sure that's all covered so I added a little piece there and I'm continuing along with my shape. So we'll go all the way up to the top because we're adding lining to this section 
And then when we're at the top section, we'll need a little space for turning the fabric. So once we've secured the front and back together, we need to be able to reach in there and pull it through. Make sure your seam tape is 100% cooled before you remove it. And then we're going to take that off of all the edges. Now you can see here that I have my lining front side up and my cover front side down. So this is important. We're putting right sides together. So when you begin to fuse your panels together, you start from the center and use a sweeping motion out to the side. So the glue is on the back side of this, this front panel here so it's not getting on my ironing board and I've got that little edge there so that I'm not fusing on to the ironing board. So once that's all secured go ahead and cut the corners off and then where there are V sections you want to just snip just a tiny bit of the fabric so it curves nicely and then carefully pull the fabric through. Now you can see here this wasn't secured in the one section so if you have a hole that pops out just reverse it again and iron it again so it's nice and secure. So carefully pull the fabric through. This is a little bit of a process. It takes some time. Then you'll just run your fingers along the edges inside and you'll see the shape start to come to life and then push out the corners and just manipulate it until it looks really nice. I have the front side facing up and I'm just ironing along to flatten all of my seams. So if you have to manipulate a little bit and, and pull it through you can. So just keep pushing on it and readjusting until it looks perfect. Once everything is completely flattened and in place, then we're going to close our little opening. So we'll use some heat and bond inside of there. So iron that down to flatten, cut a little piece of seam tape, and then you'll just stick that right inside and iron that down. Let it cool completely, and then you'll peel that paper off and then fuse that together. To make pleats, we want to make sure everything's centered. So just fold your fabric in half and then mark with a pin the exact center area so you know where to begin with the pleats. We're going to be pulling our pleats toward the center. So for pleat one, we'll begin about four and a half inches from the center and fold that over for a two and a half inch wide pleat. We'll do that on both sides. Of course, make sure they're very straight and you can manipulate the fabric until you get it exactly the way you'd like. So you'll pull that in and then just iron that down nice and flat to begin. And then for your second pleat, you'll go four and a half inches from the edge of the first pleat and pull that over for about a one and a half inch wide pleat. So you'll do that on both sides. Then once you get your fabric in place, just go ahead and iron that down nice and flat so it holds in place. Then for your final pleat, you'll move four inches past that last corner of pleat two and pull that over again about an inch and a half. So you're going to wind up with probably about an 8 inch wide connector panel. You want to make sure everything is nice and straight. So you might want to pull out your tape measure and make sure up and down that everything's nice and straight before you end up fusing everything in place. So make sure it's flat. Measure it. I've got about an 8 inch wide panel here. If you wanted something wider, you can of course stretch out your, um, your pleats. So remove the pin and then pull out the fusible backing that's included in your, in your kit. We're going to cut nice wide strips to insert behind the pleats so that we can hold those securely in place. Now this should go from the top, all the way at the top, to the bottom of the pleat. You want to make sure it's completely hidden behind the pleat. So when you're putting those inside, you will carefully position them and cut off excess if anything is extending beyond the edges. And then you'll just use the iron to fuse those down and you'll just do one at a time making sure nothing extends past the sides. Make sure to hold the fusible tape inside or the heat and bond inside so that it doesn't move when you're fusing. Sometimes that'll reposition. So you want to make sure that you don't go below the uh, curved edges and that you are completely hidden behind all of the folds. Then once everything is completely cooled then go ahead and remove all of the paper or you can remove it in sections and fuse one pleat at a time. I've removed everything here on the front and the back I'll show you the one at a time. Since you're putting so much heat for such a long time to hold those, you want to use a piece of spare lining over top uh, to not burn your fabric. Now on the back, these are shorter. You don't have to go the length of the pleat. We're just basically wanting to make sure the section that folds over the top is secured. So I am here folding and ironing one at a time.
Once you're completely finished, we're going to add our Velcro fasteners. Now this is going to determine the length. So you'll pull out your Velcro fasteners and we'll attach those using heat and bond. You can't just stick them directly on the fabric. They will loosen and come off. So you'll cut a piece of fusible backing the same size as your fastener and then just iron that down. Then you'll end up folding over to make sure, and I would suggest hanging it to make sure it's the proper length before you insert your back piece, because once you've attached your Velcro, it will be positioned, and you may find that you need it either longer or taller. So test it out first by hanging it with your panels. Then once you remove the paper when it's cooled and then remove the paper from the back of the Velcro, that will stick securely and will not move. So once you've finished attaching both of your Velcro fasteners, your connector panel will be ready to hang between your center or side panels. Thank you for joining me, Traceable Designers, and remember you can always make your mark with Traceable Designer.